Good evening and welcome to King Arena. My name is Andrew Pitkin alongside Hannah Jap bringing you this Wheaton Thunder Sports Network broadcast produced by Sunrise Communications. You might notice we're kind of wearing <laughs> a little bit of a different get up here. Well, tonight we're raising awareness for Katie McDaniel. She was struck with a type of bone cancer recently and she was able to overcome it. She's cancer free now, but tonight is uh, for her and also to raise awareness and also support throughout this game. Uh, you can donate. Uh, we'll give you more information of that as, as things go on. Yeah, and for Kay McDaniel, she was a three-time All-American for Wheaton College. She just graduated in May. She actually found out about liver cancer in April, so she actually played who knows how long with it, which is an amazing testimony, which we will have be fortunate to hear from her later on in the second half. And actually for this game, Wheaton's on a 10-game win streak, and Elmhurst is on a four-game win streak. And also, last time these two teams played, which was on December 9th, so last year, which is toward the beginning of the season, Elmhurst beat Wheaton 71-68. to So that, it'll be an interesting game because Wheaton will hope to retaliate because this will be a deciding factor between second and third because Wheaton currently is seen second, Elmhurst is third. So this will be a key game for the CCIW. And the key to this game, I think, will be threes because last time Elmhurst played Wheaton, they scored 55%. 33 points total for against this for their score, and also they had 18 points from the free throw line, and we only had 13. And we only had nine points from three, so it'll be interesting to see how this game turns out. Yeah, the Thunder really coming into their own. They had 19 blocks in the game on Wednesday against Carthage and have done a really good job around the perimeter and guarding three pointers. We're going to send over the PA system with Rus Rusty Lindsay, and we'll be right back. Tonight's game is a game to promote and support cancer awareness. As we look around the gym this evening, I'm sure that many of you have been impacted by cancer, whether it be individually or as a family member or friend. Tonight we honor those of you who are survivors, those of you who have been caregivers, and those of you who have provided support to relatives and friends who have faced this battle. The Wheaton women's basketball family was impacted by cancer last spring when we found out that Katie McDaniels, a 2007 graduate point guard at the time, had been diagnosed with chondrosarcoma, a rare bone cancer. Tonight, Katie is here, doing well, and is cancer free. <laughs> to honor her fight tonight, all donations that are raised are going to the Sarcoma Foundation of America to support research to help find a cure. Any donation given tonight will be matched up to $10,000 to support the work being done by the Sarcoma Foundation. Accept the challenge and give generously knowing that anything you can be doubled based on the portion being matched. We hope that today's efforts will bring a greater awareness to both the tremendous needs and in the encouraging progress that is being made in regards to cancer. To donate, please stop by the Rikens Rowdies table in the lobby of King Arena. At this time, we ask you please rise and gentlemen remove your caps as we honor America with the playing of our national anthem. Visiting Blue Jays of Elmhurst College. 
Wearing number three, a 5'4 freshman from Arlington Heights, Illinois, Kelly Wyrick. Number five, a 5'7 junior from Aurora, Illinois, Lisa Logan. Number 24, a 5'6 senior from Ottawa, Illinois, Jasmine Bailey. Number 31, a 6 foot junior from Carlsbad, California, Julia Madrid. And number 32, a 5'11 senior from Inglewood, Colorado, Michaela Eppert. The Blue Jays are coached by Tethy Carrillo. And now, the starting lineup for your Wheaton College Thunder. Wearing number 14, a 6'2 junior from Champaign, Illinois, Devin Kyler. Number 15, a 5'11 sophomore from East Peoria, Illinois, Jordan Myroth. Number 22, a 5'10 senior from St. Anthony, Minnesota, Kelly Lawson. Number 24, a 5'9 senior from Wheaton, Illinois, Maggie Dansdell. And number 34, a 6'2 sophomore from Batavia, Illinois, Hannah Frazier. Wheaton is coached by Kent Madsen. And welcome back to the media table. And my name is Andrew Pickin alongside Hannah Jap. And tonight, as we talked about, a special night raising support for this rare type of bone cancer and for Katie McDaniels here, who is spearheading this, obviously the cancer survivor and now cancer free, a huge night for her. And you're gonna see, once our scoreboard graphic comes up, there's going to be directions for how you can support this cause and be giving more information as this goes on. But it'll really be an all-night event. It'll go on throughout this game, throughout uh, the next game as well. And anyone that donates, you can donate knowing that your donation will be matched up to $10,000 from a very extremely generous donator. So we thank them for that as Elmhurst has actually won the tip here, something we don't see too often, the opposing team winning the tip on Devin Kyler. That's usually bizarre. We usually see how it's going toward Wheaton's way. Here's Eppard. Logan. And Devin Kyler tips that one up and gets it back. Here comes Myroth. The corner to Lawson. Pull-up jumper doesn't go. Rebound by Wyrick. Eppard on the roll. Looked like she might have walked. Instead, she missed it, and Kyler has the board. Now down low to Hannah Frazier. That's going to be quite a matchup all day. Frazier and Eppard, two players that will likely be all CCIW selections, probably fighting for that first team spot if both of them don't make it. Exactly. It will be a good key matchup. Pretty similar heights, same build. It will be very competitive underneath the rim tonight. Also looking at some interesting facts from the series against Elmhurst versus Whedon. At all time at home for Whedon, they're 37 and two. The last against Elmhurst early season was at Elmhurst. Devin Kyler with the layup there. Minute 10 seconds into the game. Here's Madrid now over to Logan. Bailey. Jasmine Bailey in the lane, out to Eppard for three. No good, and Devin Kyler tips it to herself. Yeah, like what you mentioned about the matchup between Eppard and Frazier. Eppard has 17.5 points average on the season, and Frazier averages 14.9. So they're the top scorers for both their teams. Dansdale so with a short post jumper there. Now Logan. Eppard has position, but doesn't get it to her. Wyrick passed her defender but can't finish around Lawson. Myroth into the lane, kick to Frazier. Frazier, post move, gets to her left hand, doesn't go, and Wyrick coming the other way quickly. 
Blocked there by Kyler. Actually, a foul is called on the shot. I was looking at the replay. There might have been a little contact on that play. With Wheaton, they're such a great blocking team, but there's also, if you just even hit a little bit of their hand, it's going to be called a foul. Yeah, that's a risk that you're going to take as a team that averages as many blocks as they do. First for total blocks, first for blocks per game at about 9.1. And if you're going to be doing that, that's going to be, that's going to be an issue possibly fouling the other team. Madrid from Carlsba Carlsbad, California. Devin Kyler floats it up with the left hand and it goes in. He's got four early points. Yeah, nice easy lay layup for Kyler. She at least she made it look easy. Yes, she does. She does the way she goes over her defenders. And Logan blocked inside there. Now Frazier coming the other way. Dan still working on Logan. Kick out to Frazier. Down low to Myroff on the back cut, and she's got it. And that's Myroff's first two points of the game. So we see a couple of layups for the Fro Thunder. Madrid over to Logan. Bailey, elbow jumper. Nice. Able to lean into that one. Yeah, that's a difficult shot to make. She had a couple defenders right in front of her, just tries to get over the Thunder, because if it's a little bit lower, it would have been blocked. Jordan Myroth, got her defender to go one way, now over to Kyler. Kyler drives in, and that layup doesn't roll over. 8-4 your score, as here's Wyrick. Lost it, go for it, but couldn't get it back. Now Myroth with Eppert in front of her, tried to go around, pass to Dansdale, wide open underneath, and it's in. Excellent play by the Thunder. Myroth had two defenders right in front of her. Great core awareness to pass it to her teammates to get the, to get the points. So here's Wyrick trying to get something going now. Logan. Madrid down to Eppert. Eppert couldn't make that one. But averaging 17 and a half points per game, they're going to continue to go to her. Frazier couldn't put that one in. A timeout taken, but there's no way that that's allowed because Hannah Frazier had the ball. So a mistake made here by the referee, and Frazier was right under the basket. She was, but they cannot call a timeout unless they were like trying to call it earlier. But even then, bizarre. <laughs> That was strange. That was bizarre. <laughs> that was strange. It's Wheaton ball under the basket. Kayla Jones will now come into the game because of that break in play. Madrid will take a seat. 30 seconds showing on the shot clock. Here's Frazier going up, but off the side of the backboard. Now Logan passes to Eppert. Downloaded Jones, looking for an option. Going up is Logan through contact and doesn't make it. She thought she was fouled. And she gets a technical right away for something she said going back down the court. The player did have some pressure underneath the rim, but I didn't really see anything that would cause it to be a foul. And you're seeing that graphic on the bottom below the scoreboard. Donate on Venmo for tonight's sarcoma event. That is. Of course, the event in honor of Katie McDaniels tonight as Hannah Frazier will shoot a couple free throws. Wheaton basketball is on a mission tonight to raise awareness and funds for the Sarcoma Foundation of, Ameri of All American in honor of Katie McDaniels and her fight against Honda Sarcoma. All donations made tonight will be matched up to $10,000, so please consider how you can contribute to tonight's event. Directions are on the scoreboard, as I said, for how you can donate. And Hannah Frazier made her two free throws. She's actually shooting 88% from the free throw line, which is, the, which is best on the Thunder squad for. Cross court pass here to Lawson. Into lane blocked by Wyrick coming across. 
That's a very, uh, you won't expect that for Elmhurst because they actually only average about 2.5 blocks per game. Well, and specifically, you don't expect that from Wyrick because she's only standing at five foot four. But coming across and making her presence heard into the game is Georgia Garvey out of Gold Coast, Australia for the Blue Jays. Jen Berg also in, and there is Wyrick taking a charge, as it were, off the ball. Or rather, on the ball just before she passed it. Yeah. I don't think Frazier was aware she was there as she was passing the ball. I think she was looking at her teammate. Yeah, it's one of those where you're trying to get the ball away before you're going to run into the defender, but it was just a little bit too late. So over five minutes gone here, 12 to 4, your score between the Thunder and the Blue Jays. Bailey. Down low to Eppard, fronted by Berg. And good position by her to get to the basket. Great position. So far we have not seen any players shoot from three. We've had one attempt from three for, that was from Elmhurst. But so far all baskets have been made underneath the rim. This one turned over by Dansdale, thrown down low to Bailey. Jones looking for an option. Pass out here toward us. And ends up out of bounds for the Thunder. Looks like there was a little bit of miscommunication on that play. Down low to Jillberg. Able to get it down low this time to her, and she puts it in. And that's Jill's first two points on the game for her. And we're still continuing to see the layup trend being for Whedon's scoring method. Yeah, that's what they're going to try to do. They've got good shooters as well, but their height always an advantage. Here's Eppert trying to get it to Jones. It was tipped away, but she got it. Now Garvey with the left-handed floater doesn't go. And Jill Berg really jumping up for that rebound. Lawson, jumper, and they've got her extending her arm there on an offensive foul. We've seen quite a few calls already call, called early on in this game. It looks like the, the elbow's sticking out. Yeah, just a little bit of a bow there. Down low to Eppard, and again, Jill Berg fronting her and able to put it in. That was a good play by Elmhurst to find the opening to have her, because Wheaton's players are on the other side of the rim, not in front of her. So she was able to get an easier shot. Dan still drives in, and she was met by Eppard. Now Lawson gets past her and finishes. <laughs> Wyrick setting something up here on the right wing. Skip to Garvey for three. No good. Off the hands of Jenberg, but then tipped out by Wyrick. Help us reach our goal of raising $10,000 for the Sarcoma Foundation of America. Directions are listed on the bottom of the screen for how you can donate to tonight's event, honoring Katie McDaniels and her battle with Kronja Sarcoma. An anonymous donor will match up to $10,000, so please consider how you can support this cause. Skip pass over to Dembski. Just into the game. We've seen it in the last three home games. She's in for three-point shooting ability as Jill can't put that one in. Eppard kicks out to Logan. Garvey. Now Logan. Jones gets a screen from Eppard, goes away from it, puts it up. Hung there, but doesn't go in. And a foul called here against Wyrick, undercutting Jordan Myroth. That's the sixth foul that's been called in the 
First quarter. Down low to Myroth with position on Wyrick, but her layup doesn't go. Eppard with the rebound. To Garvey, fronted by Jill Berg again this time, able to tip it away. Good play by Jill just to disrupt the passing play. This one into Jones. She'll put up a three in and out. That one thrown to Jill Berg. She wasn't turning around, but ended up with Lawson. Myroth holding this one, trying to get it down low to Lawson, and Eppert sniffed it out. Almost just playing a very tight man to man. Thought about the three, Eppert, and then Logan driving. Now Wyrick. Elmer's looking for an opening, but the Thunder really closing everything off. Nine seconds left on the shot clock. Jones tries to create. Back to Eppert, tipped by Jill Berg. Kayla Jones saves it. Garvey puts it up in time, but doesn't go down. That's a Thunder solid defense. They're, at, they're holding their opponents to 56 points per game on average. 10 seconds left now in the quarter. Dembski over to Lawson. It was tipped by Logan, and they've got her for a foul from behind. So that's her second personal foul now, as she had the technical earlier. And they're just, yeah, I think going through the hand of Lawson. Yeah, lots of contact has been initiated in this quarter already. Very aggressive to get to the ball. Myroth here was driving in, and a foul called on Jillberg underneath. So 2.8 seconds now for the Blue Jays to try to make something happen. Wyrick letting it roll, picks it up now. She's in the lane, passes over to no one, in fact, to end out the quarter. The Thunder up 16 to eight on the Elmers. Blue Jays just trying to hold them, able to hold them under 10 points there. Yeah, solid defense by the Thunder tonight. And we've seen mainly their scoring method has been layups and short, short shots, which have worked so far because they're up by eight points. Cancer has impacted the lives of nearly everyone. And tonight, Wheaton basketball and Rikens rallies are fighting back. Tonight's event honors 2017 grad Katie McDaniels and her battle against Quandra Sarcoma. All donations tonight support the Sarcoma Foundation of America and will be matched up to $10,000. Please help us reach our goal. See the information on the bottom of the screen to see how you can fight, join the fight against Sarcoma. And just really a great cause tonight um, that I was just reading about. And Katie McDaniels, three-time All-American and played at least a bit of her career with that misdiagnosed cancer, that bone cancer, and uh, just coming public with it in the last two or three days. And it's really cool to see everybody come out in support of this event. Yeah, it's super exciting. She is such, I've known a little bit through my time at volleyball. Such a, such a gem, such a wonderful human being. Her teammates love her to death, I know that. It's just really exciting to see how Wheaton basketball has been just kind of driven back to her because how much she has contributed to this team. Yeah, she's a person that's easy to rally around, so she's the perfect person to lead something like this. And obviously, you don't want anyone to go through what she went through. But after she had to and to, to host an event like this, I mean, she's obviously she's going to speak at halftime and get to hear a little bit more about the cause. and. And it's been said how how much cancer has impacted so many people's lives in so many different ways, and you know, really see it tonight with all the people showing up and and donating. So we encourage you to donate uh, throughout this contest as well as the men's basketball broadcast, as it will be an all-night thing, and it will also be a yearly thing. This is the inaugural uh, event of this, so. So a foul there on the baseline and the ball thrown into Kyler. Lawson almost hit in the face there by Kyler. The ball too close in front of her face. 
Dansdale to Berg at the elbow, drives in on Eppard, and she couldn't put it in. Bailey down low to Eppard, and Kyler with a foul. I would disagree with that, Paul. And the foul going against Maggie Dansdill. Not Kyler. Kyler was definitely yeah. in legal guarding position. And Michaela Eppard, what a career she has had, has started every game of her Blue Jay career. She's 12th in the nation for rebounds per game at 9, 14th for field goal percentage at 58%. And she has been a huge part of this program for the last four years. Very big asset, especially 17 points per game. You're contributing a, a big amount to your team, especially in key games, such as this one. Here's Dansdale over to Dembski. I think Lawson got away with a travel there in the corner. And the ball out of bounds for the Thunder. This season, Wheaton Athletics is proud to partner with Realty Executives as the exclusive sponsor of replays on our broadcast. We are happy to welcome Eric Logan, Becky Vanderveen, and the Energized team to the Wheaton Athletics family and extend a special thank you to them for enhancing our WTSM broadcast. Christy Dembski off the backboard. Kind of made an ugly looking face on the way back. Just <laughs> understand that her shot wasn't the prettiest. It wasn't the prettiest, but it went in. That's also the first three of this game. <laughs> You don't really see a bank shot three very often. Garvey into the lane, went down hard there. No call, and Devin Kyler running the break. It looked like she tripped on the play. Dembski open for another three, hits. This one straight in. Two in a row. Remember that one game, I think it was like a couple weeks ago when she hit like four in one quarter? Yeah, against Trinity Christian College. That one. Four of four in the first quarter, and here she is, two of two in the second quarter. And she just gives her team a huge lift when she is able to do this. And the last couple weeks, she's been able to come in and bring three-point shooting production. Jones looking for an opening, but she double dribbled. Help us reach our goal of raising $10,000 for the Sarcoma Foundation of America. Directions are listed on the bottom of the screen for how you can donate to tonight's event honoring Katie McDaniels and her battle with Karanja Sarcoma. An anonymous donor will match up to $10,000, so please consider how you can support this cause. So a timeout taken here. And look at some scores around the CCIW as well. Carthage with 20 points to Milliken, 15 in the first half still. And North Park and North Central facing off 16 to 14 in favor of North Park. All right, so a little bit more action on the CCIW. Yeah, so far it's been all Michaela Ebert, six points, two points for the other players on Elmhurst. And for the Thunder, pretty balanced scoring. Christy Dembski, two shots, six points. That's the power of the three-point arc for her. It's yeah. a, it is amazing how three-pointers can impact the game. So just talking about in the opening, how this number scored 55, or 30, not 55, 33 points from three, three shooting, 55%. Right, a lot of that three-point shooting is likely going to come from number 24, Jasmine Bailey. She's first in the CCIW for three-point field goals made per game at 2.9. She also won the IHSA Class 4A three-point contest when she was a senior. Frazier, an ill-advised shot there, doesn't go in. So far for Bailey, she's only had one shot in this game, but she made. Drive in and blocked by Frazier and off her. O'Donnell trying to take this one in. Very nice block. Also on Wednesday, the Thunder had 19 block shots against Carthage. And those 19 blocks are the most in a women's game across all this NCAA levels this season. Kayla Jones couldn't put that one in and then she's fouled on her offensive rebound and putback attempt. So she'll head to the free throw line. 
We've seen quite a bit of an action underneath the rim, especially with the layup shots and rebounds. Kayla Jones tonight coming off the bench. Two-time All-CCIW player in her senior year here. 11.3 points per game and 6.3 rebounds per game. Has also contributed a lot to this program. Also the same class as Michaela Eppard. That one off to the left. Christy Dembski running point guard and Hannah Williams is into the game. Ball over to Frazier. Driving in around Eppard. Got her own rebound, missed again. We've seen a couple misses close to the rim for her early on in this one. Wyrick passes out to Jones. Eppard going up and she was fouled before the shot. And so it'll be a side out foul here on the baseline. It's a little bit of bump there at the free throw line maybe. A little bit. So Frazier has to take a seat with two personals and she really has struggled to this point in this game with two points on no field goals and there's a shot there from number 34, Courtney O'Donnell. Dembski open for three once again, hits. Unbelievable from three point land in the second quarter. She's perfect in this game so far. Leads all scores with nine points. Eppard looking for an option, find, finds Jones. Now Bailey. Down low to O'Donnell, lost her footing. And a foul called on Jill Bird. Thunder need to be careful, a lot of their Taller players getting into foul trouble here. Jill Berg now has two personal fouls. And Hannah Frazier already sitting with two. I'm seeing very aggressive play from both sides, but sometimes being aggressive equals fouls. Now we're taking a replay of Dembski's last three. We say it like it's boring just because we've seen it so much so recently, <laughs> but it, she's still shooting from you know, a good foot or two behind the three-point arc. That's not an easy shot, but for her recently, she's been stroking it. Dembski over to Williams. Down to Myroth, but off her hands, and Eppard coming the other way. And she traveled. She did a jump stop, and then Moved a foot, and once you do a jump stop, you don't have a pivot foot anymore. You have to keep both your feet still, so a turnover. Here's Dembski. Got Urso all over, and a foul called on her. So good defense by Urso getting... All up in the way there, but called for a foul. Devin Kyler now. Down low to Jill Berg. Devin Kyler open for three. No good. Williams fought for it, but it bounced off to Bailey. And a foul called here on Hannah Williams. Yeah, there was some contact being made on the sideline. Yeah, I think there was just that hand on the hip, and that's usually going to be an automatic call if you have an open hand up. Tonight, Wheaton Basketball is raising awareness and funds for the Sarcoma Foundation of America. Last spring, All-American point guard Katie McDaniels was diagnosed with a rare bone cancer called chondrosarcoma after surgery in May. Thankfully, she is cancer-free today. Help us find a cure by donating to, to tonight's effort by following the instructions listed on the scoreboard for tonight's broadcast. Thanks to an anonymous donor, all donations raised tonight will be matched up to $10,000. Every little bit helps, so please consider donating. Elmer's had the offensive rebound and a save there from Jill Berg, and the Thunder are coming the other way. 
Devin Kyler crossover to the layup. Great job by Thunder to get the steal. And then for Kyler to drive to the basket. Wyrick down to Eppard, met by Kyler, and tipped out of bounds. Just under five minutes here, the Thunder up 27 to 15. In their last game, they held Carthage to just 35 points and had 19 blocks, as we've mentioned. Just a testament to their defensive effort overall so far this season. Here's Urso, seven seconds left on the shot clock. Wyrick driving in, gets it over to O'Donnell for the layup, a fantastic pass from Wyrick. Very fantastic pass, she was pretty well open for in basketball terms. It was Wyrick drawing the defense to herself, thinking she was gonna put it up and then passed it at the last second. Anna Williams gets a screen. Now down to her. Devin Kyler, five seconds left on the shot clock. Down low to Myra, and she can't put it in. Here comes Wyrick, over to Bailey. Now Eppard, didn't have it initially, but got it back and put it in. Cuts it to an eight point game. And Coach Madsen wants a timeout to talk this over with his team. That was a good try by Jill to disrupt the pass a little bit, but it wasn't quite enough, so Elmer's was able to get some more points. Yeah, Elmer's already in this quarter has 11 points. In the first quarter, they were only able to get eight. So better offensive production from them. Wheaton basketball is on a mission tonight to raise awareness and funds for the Sarcoma Foundation of America in honor of Katie McDaniels and her fight against Chondra Sarcoma. All donations made tonight will be matched up to $10,000, so please consider how you can contribute to tonight's event. Directions are on the scoreboard for how you can donate. That scoreboard is going to pop up right about now. Devin Kyler down low on Eppard and she lost it. Wyrick able to get it to O'Donnell and now coming back with Wyrick. Here's Urso. Eppard thought about the three now driving in. And a nice screen there from O'Donnell. Not too often you're gonna see a screen that's placed halfway to the basket on a drive, but there it was. Also, with that point, um, Elmer's is on a six-point run. Jen Berg wide open for three, but it doesn't go. That's not a player you're going to want to leave open, though, if you are Elmhurst. Number 34, O'Donnell, just staying well away from her. So here's Wyrick. Driving into the lane, kicks out to Bailey, open for three, doesn't go, and Kyler has the rebound. Myra crossover past Urso, and the floater in and out. Thought it was gonna go in, just didn't get the right bounce. Eppard now guarded by Lawson. Lawson went for the steal, didn't get it. That one kicked, or should I say punted. <laughs> Out of bounds there, I believe, by Kyler. Looks like they're trying to bounce pass. That was actually a fortunate break for Wheaton because I think Kyler and Bird were having a little miscommunication. Who was supposed to be guarding who? Christy Dembski is back in, as well as Maggie Dansdill. Play was run for Eppard, but didn't get it to her. O'Donnell underneath. Went through Kyler, but missed it. Now the ball up to Lawson on the fast break. Switch pass to Jen Berg, Devin Kyler. And Lawson slows it down. Devin Kyler has a mismatch underneath if the Thunder see it. Dan still shoots a three short, gets her own rebound. Kick out to Berg, but she's got a fresh shot clock. No need to hurry. 
Jimberg into the lane and she's fouled there by Michaela Eppert. That contact being made as she was shooting, so that would have not gone in. But she gets a chance for two. Jen Berg at the line and help us reach our goal of raising $10,000 for the Sarcoma Foundation of America. Directions are listed on the bottom of the screen for how you can donate to tonight's event honoring Katie McDaniels and her battle with Chondra Sarcoma. An anonymous donor will match up to $10,000, so please consider how you, can, how you can support this cause. Down low to Eppert on the slip screen, and she's got it. Savvy play from her. The key to her success is just so much movement around the court. She'll either be setting a screen for someone else or she'll slip out or she'll get a screen from someone. This one turned over by the Thunder to O'Donnell. A five point game we're looking at here between the Thunder and the Blue Jays. Yeah, close game so far. We've seen rebounds have been a pretty big asset to this game in the second quarter. Elmhurst has 13 and Whedon only has six. Eppard, tough angle, tough shot. And Berg has the rebound. And now they have seven. Download a Lawson and ball thrown too far out of bounds. You see a couple wild sh passes from Whedon trying to go into big Elmhurst traffic or just a little bit too much power behind it. Yeah, uncharacteristic for the Thunder to have this many turnovers in the first half. It is unnormal. Five to six second difference between game clock and shot clock. Bailey gets it down low to Epper, tipped away by Kyler, and somehow Urso comes up with it. So Urso again gets around Dembski, blocked by Jen Bird. She sent it back. Seven seconds left for Lawson now. Lawson gets it to Dembski, has to put it up. Off the back iron and Dansdale with the rebound, but not enough time to put it back. So the score at halftime, 28 to 23. And the Blue Jays really put together a good run there going into halftime. They did. They outscored Wheaton 15 to 12 in the second quarter. You're looking at replay. The block from Jen Berg on Urso. That kind of almost looked like a volleyball hit because kind of like snapping it down. Very, very nice play. I enjoyed that. So we're going to swing this one over to Rusty Lindsay and Katie McDaniels on the court. Katie, of course, the one, the star of the night, who this night is completely all about. Hi. And so we're going to send it over to her now oh, okay. on the court. Hi, everybody. Like you said, my name is Katie McDaniels, and um, this is my mom, Jan. And yeah, give it up for Jan! Woo! Yeah. <laughs> um, so I had the privilege of playing basketball here at Wheaton for four years. It was the best time. I loved it so much. Um, but at the end of my senior year, so after basketball was done, I went in with Trish, our trainer, to get my hips checked because I had kind of had ongoing, long problems with my hips throughout all of college. And the doctor that I saw found a tumor in my femur. But they were pretty confident that it was benign, no big deal. Um, so, kind of several weeks and a lot of, a lot of testing later, uh, three misdiagnoses later, I was correctly diagnosed with a rare form of bone cancer called chondrosarcoma. Um, so, yeah, but today, I'm, nine months later, after a really invasive surgery and long recovery at home, I'm very fortunate to say that I'm cancer free now. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. I'm so grateful. But anyways, so I just kind of wanted to give everybody a little bit of education about what we're raising money for here today um, and what the Sarcoma Foundation is about. So chondrosarcoma, what I was diagnosed with, most commonly affects people ages 30 to 70. But obviously there are exceptions, as you can see, but that's kind of the age range that it most commonly affects. Um, and so there are three types of sarcoma that are considered primary bone cancer and they're all kind of covered under the umbrella of what the Sarcoma Foundation is about. So those are 
chondrosarcoma, osteosarcoma, and Ewing sarcoma. And what, what primary bone cancer means is that the tumor originates in the bone and then can metastasize to other areas of the body. But it first starts in the bone. Um, so kind of the reason why this fundraising is so important is that these cancers are a lot more rare. Um, and one in three adults diagnosed with a primary bone cancer doesn't make it past five years. So that's not a very good prognosis overall um, for sarcoma. And kind of the other major thing that I would want to hit on is it's evident that there's more research and educating that needs to be done because a lot of sarcoma patients have the common experience of being misdiagnosed several times. And if, you don't, if you're not able to kind of keep pursuing the right answers, you could just let it go until it's far too late. So early detection is not very common in sarcoma. Um, but, so that's kind of just a little bit of education, but with that said, I want to say thank you all so, so much for being here from the bottom of my heart. And um, thank you to anyone that might be able to donate time or resources to the Sarcoma Foundation tonight. Um, we also want to acknowledge today that most of the people in this gym have been affected by cancer through the diagnosis and journey of a loved one. And if that's you here today, um, I just want you to know that I have prayed for you um, and that I'm praying that the Lord would give you fullness of joy and hope as you move forward, knowing that his love for you and me has overcome the pain and sorrow of this world. So we can stand firm together in our faith and in our fight, trusting that he who has overcome will help us to also overcome. So thank you all so much for being here, and thank you to Wheaton Basketball, my girls for all of your love and support. And yeah, I love you guys so much. Go Thunder, woo! And the sun was shining as well as it could on the shadowy river, a good part of the shine being caught in the trees. Since about this time last year, uh, painting the Fox River, starting up in West Dundee in the north, we're going to cover all the way down to Ottawa. I hope that it happens at least with one painting I make out of these 60 that, you know, when you look at it, it just leads you. It's heuristic. You know, it, it wants you to go. It wants you to, to, to uh, you know, to encounter. I mean, I sometimes think of it as kind of homesickness, you know, where you feel like your identity is out there somewhere else. You're here, but you, you have this pull, you know, to be somewhere, and it's an ache. In Gilead, you know, John Ames at some point talks about this old, this town, uh, Gilead, and he says, you know, this town has been wearied a little and then wearied a little more, and yet he says hope is still there. And I mean, that is the thing, hope isn't the accomplishment. This whole idea of, you know, when is hope important? It's hope that it's important when it's dark, you know, when you can't see. That's when it manifests itself as, as a possibility. So these paintings aren't about a sort of glorious resolution, but I hope they are something that makes one feel a glimmer of hope for possibilities.
Hi, I'm Nate Brown. College will be one of the most transformational experiences in your life. My education in the context of a Christian community helped shape the way I live and engage the world around me. I love that Wheaton relates Christian liberal arts to the needs of contemporary society. The classes are designed to combine faith and learning, giving you a biblical perspective that's accessible and applicable. Wheaton students are challenged to answer questions like, what does it mean to live as a Christian doctor, engineer, or business professional? Being in an environment with other students and faculty who are passionate about their faith and serious about their education will help you to know who you are in Christ and prepare you to go wherever he leads you. I look forward to helping you find your way to Wheaton. Talk to you soon. Like when I close my When I close my eyes
And welcome back to King Arena for this Wheaton Thunder Sports Network broadcast produced by Sunrise Communications. I'm Andrew Picking alongside Hannah Jaffin. Also, Katie McDaniels, you're kind of the woman of the hour tonight and also the person that this whole event is for and also everything you went through. Could you just talk about a little bit, um, just a little bit about your journey and about everything that you went through and um, what led up to this night? Sure. Okay, so like I said, I was misdiagnosed several times. So kind of the first step was they found a mass in my femur. Then we sent it to a couple different, well, then I had to have a bunch of MRIs and CT scans and all of that. And then we got a first opinion. They said it was nothing. We got a second opinion. They said it was nothing. We got a third opinion. They said it was nothing. And then finally, I had a feeling, I think the Lord just put it on my heart that something wasn't right. So we kind of kept pursuing it. And finally, the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, said we're 100% positive. This is chondrosarcoma. We've seen it before. We know this is what it is. This needs to come out as soon as possible, etc. So then I had to have a procedure where they made an eight-inch incision in my leg, um, kind of cut a window into my femur to remove the bone, to remove the tumor and the mass and then they had to kind of burn the whole inside of my femur and wash it with chemo um, and then fill it with biologic grade cement it's called so that I can still have substance in my bone and then do a bone graft on the outside so and then that was a kind of a really long healing process it'll be at least a year until I'm kind of back to full speed like I was before um, but it's been eight and a half months so far and everything's gone well and I have um, scans every three months to make sure that everything's still clean and they've all been good. Praise the Lord. So Praise the Lord. I'm grateful. Praise the Lord indeed. During this like process of figuring out what was going on, I would suggest your teammates have been a big support system behind you in this. What's something that they've just helped you through like in specific ways? Yeah, I think it was definitely hard to be newly graduated. Um, kind of trying to figure out a new phase of life, but they were all so supportive, sending me sweet messages and calling me and making sure that I knew that they were praying for me. So I really appreciated that and the coaches too, always making sure that I knew how valued I was and how much they were praying for me. Getting underway here, but we'll keep on with the interview for a couple more minutes, Katie, and talking with Katie McDaniels here. And uh, yeah, just what, what all does this night mean to you and seeing so many familiar faces and all the people um, rally, rallying around you, but also as you talked about in your speech um, about the general cause um, against cancer. Yeah, I mean, it feels like home. King Arena is like so homey. The first time I came back, I cried. It just is, I wish I was out there still, <laughs> but I love being here and I'm just so grateful for all the support in this room. All the girls' families have been super supportive and kind of upheld my family during the really hard time and I think that this night is really important because like I said there's not a lot of funding going towards finding a cure for sarcoma. Uh, kind of a statistic that I left out earlier is that I think there's 20% of sarcomas are curable by surgery alone, 30% are curable by uh, surgery, radiation and chemo and 50% are untreatable so kind of that 50% of people it's just extremely brutal and there's not a lot of hope right now because there aren't a ton of resources going towards it because there aren't as many people impacted by it per year. There's only 600 people diagnosed with chondrosarcoma in the United States a year. So that it kind of makes sense why there would be not as much funding going towards it, but it is definitely a need that they have. And the Sarcoma Foundation is working really hard to raise funds for research and education and all of that good stuff. But. Well, yeah, just kind of a final question for those watching at home and seeing all the support here for you and for, for uh, cancer fighters, what would you like to say to them um, just about, you know, getting into this cause and getting into uh, donating like they can for this, uh, this specific cause? I am so grateful for anybody that even considers donating one dollar, one dime, whatever it is, um, to this cause or any other cause. I I know that cancer is, is just a nasty animal and I think the biggest thing that I can say is to lean on your faith in times of fear and times of struggle and we know that the Lord will see us through and if he doesn't we'll be in heaven and there's no better place than that so that kind of gets rid of all the fear but I just 
I'm so grateful to anybody that takes the time to care about any type of cancer because I know that we all have our own specific things that we're passionate about and that we care about. But sarcoma tonight, um, thank you all so much for listening. And to anybody that's considering donating, you can go also online to the Sarcoma Foundation and donate that way. But yeah. Yeah, well, amen, and I hope that the cause and people hear you. I mean, I know you already got me just in this interview. Oh, I'm definitely you. gonna gonna give something, and so we just thank you for for everything you've done tonight. And I mean, it's it's kind of hard to even just focus on the basketball game. But what what do you think is gonna happen here tonight with uh, with the play on the floor? Yeah, I think the Thunder are gonna get a big dub tonight. <laughs> so, oh yeah, so proud of them. <laughs> I love them so much. They're the best girls in the world. So. Well, Katie, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Katie. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of the game and the rest of the night. Thank you. Go Thunder. Woo woo! <laughs> so, Katie McDaniels joining us for the first few minutes of this second half. And as I said at the beginning, she's the reason that we're doing everything we are tonight for cancer survivors like her, but also specifically for those fighting against cancer of chondrosarcoma as she talked about such a rare um, bone cancer that she has had to deal with but is cancer free and has been able to overcome and wants to make sure that that can be something that is overcome by other people and we've got a traveling violation here on Devin Kyler and just two points scored for each side so far in this second half yeah, I admire Katie's advocacy for people with this cancer because you can go through the treatment and such and then at the end just saying I survived it but instead she's like helping others in a way to that but who are also battling it because she mentioned that it is rare and many people don't survive past five years yeah there's a lot of people that she mentioned that don't yeah don't last past five years and 50 percent of people who end up with this rare form of bone cancer it ends up being terminal so really a blessing for her to be here and you heard her faith really come into the whole process of, of the misdiagnosis and then hearing that it was cancer and going through the chemo and just, we're just so grateful to hear that she is cancer free. As Hannah Frazier hits a shot there. 32 to 27 year score. Bailey trying to get around Myra. And then passed out and effort. Eight seconds left on the shot clock. Bailey puts up a three, hits. With a hand coming from the side of Myroth. And it's a two point game. Threes can make a difference in the game and that's Bailey's first three and I bet we'll probably see a couple more in this game. Threes can make a difference. Coach Madsen acknowledging that as well as Christy Dembski is at the scorer's table now, ready to check in in a second as Hannah Frazier is fouled underneath here. And Eppert's got two personals now here after four minutes into the second half. And that one rims out for it. Help us reach our goal of raising $10,000 for the Sarcoma Foundation of America. Directions are listed on the bottom of the screen for how you can donate to tonight's event honoring Katie McDaniels, who we just talked about, and her battle with chondrosarcoma. An anonymous donor will match up to $10,000, so please consider how you can support this cause. Logan passed it off to Wyrick. Now Madrid. Eppert for three. No good. That one would have tied it up had it gone in. Yeah, so we've seen a couple times Elmhurst is starting to try to shoot from three a little bit more because in the first half we saw most for both teams going underneath the basket for points. This one falls to Lawson and she puts it in with the left hand. In case you're not understanding the CCIW standings implications of this game, nine and two is the record of the CCIW, eight and three for Elmhurst, and Elmhurst beat Wheaton earlier this year, so if they are tied at tiebreakers, that's blocked by Frazier, then it would end up that Elmhurst would be up on the tiebreaker, and Devin Kyler in with a layup there. Timeout taken here, 30 second timeout. 
by Elmhurst. Nice fast play by the Thunder to get two more points to extend, to extend the lead to seven. And like you said about the standings right now, Illinois Wesleyan is setting perfect at 11-0, so most likely we'll be hosting the tournament. But the next three are all decided, like one game, like nine, eight, and seven on wins. It is pretty close. Cancer has impacted the lives of nearly everyone in tonight. Wheaton Basketball and Rikens Rowdies are fighting back. Tonight's event honors 2017 grad Katie McDaniels in her battle against Kronja Sarcoma. All donations tonight support the Sarcoma Foundation of America and will be matched up to $10,000. Please help us reach our goal. See the information on the bottom of the screen to see how you can join the fight against Sarcoma. And we're ready to play basketball again here with Wyrick. Down low to Eppard. Eppard goes to the left hand. Good post move from her on the spin. Nice move and nice bounce for the extra two points. And that's a great play right out of the timeout for the Blue Jays as Dansdale lost that one. Down low to Frazier. Out to Kyler, open for three, hits. Nothing but net. Nice play by Thunder Hair. Frazier was covered by two, by two Blue Jays. And Devin Kyler is open at beyond the three, three point circle. Here's Eppard over to Urso. Marissa Urso driving left over for three and hits is Wyrick. Matches the three of Devin Kyler. Kyler driving on O'Donnell. Switched over to Dembski. Dansdell driving and distracted by Eppard. Kick out to Kyler for three. No good this time. Just a little bit undershot. Definitely the three-point shot has been more active this second half. Wyrick kicks over to Eppard. Out to Wyrick. Urso open for three. Hits! And the Blue Jays are doing well from behind the three-point arc. They are. With Urso and um, Wyrick, that's their first three points on the game with a nice pretty three. Dansdale for three. Hits! And Dansdale answers. Three-point party here in King Arena for both sides. That's at least three pointers in a row. And that's the way Elmers was able to beat Wheaton the last time, making 11 threes in the last game with a 55 percentage. That one missed, and Devin Kyler brings it up. Down to Frazier. And she turns on a post move to her left hand. Very nice move to get, create some space between her and the defender. Garvey tried to pass it out, but she stepped on the line before she could do so. And a seven point advantage for the Thunder into the game for the first time is Becca Gerke. And the Thunder send in Christy Dembski and Hannah Williams. So Dembski will bring it up, actually passed over to Kyler. Down to Jill. Put it up, but too far. Now Wyrick will look for a shot for the Blue Jays. Wyrick steps back, foot on the line, no good. And Devin Kyler pulls it away from O'Donnell. Ball over to Dembski, quick fire for three. Rebound by Williams. Down low to Jillberg all alone. Quick reaction by the Thunder for an extra two points. Thunder now stretch their lead to nine. O'Donnell going into Kyler. Kyler with the foul. You were about to say block. I was about to say block, <laughs> but it wasn't a block, it was a foul. First team of their 
And yeah, didn't get as much of the ball as I thought she did the first time. So her second personal. And that shot made by O'Donnell. Jerky is back down low. Jen Berg is in for Devin Kyler. Coach Madsen just wants to make sure she doesn't get in too much foul trouble here. Wyrick taking a break and Logan in. And now Jordan Myroth entering the game for Kelly Lawson. So one at a time subs for both teams delaying the second free throw. And there'll be an extra sub for Elmhurst once. O'Donnell's done shooting. So O'Donnell makes the free throw and Kayla Jones replaces her. Now a little bit of pressure here from the Blue Jays as Urso is up on Myroth. 50 seconds left here, 24 on the shot clock. Down low to Jill Berg on Gerke. Good position from her to put it in. Layups have been a very steady method for game points for the Thunder this game. Jones driving left, hooks, doesn't go. Jenberg with the rebound and a foul from behind on Gerke. Great aggressiveness by Berg to get that rebound. So now if the Thunder wants you, they can hold this ball for the last shot of the quarter. Here's Williams over to Myroth. Down to Berg and a foul from behind on Gerke. That's two quick fouls on her in the last 15 seconds. And there's not a whole lot there. Maybe just shoved her out a little bit. That's been something from behind that we couldn't quite see. Myroth kicks to Jill Berg. Driving right, puts it up and gets the roll. Clock still running on the Blue Jays. Three seconds left now for Urso. Two, one, throws it up short. And the Thunder able to stretch their lead after it was cut to two. Back out to 11 going into the fourth quarter and the Blue Jays really were getting something going from three-point land in that quarter, at least at the first half of the of the third quarter. Yeah, the first half, they had quite a few going on. They were three for five from three, so nine points from the three-point. For the Thunder, they had they were two for six, so they got two three-pointers. Overall, like the second quarter, Elmhurst outscored Wheaton 15 to 12, but the third quarter, Wheaton outscored 23 to 17. So this was a high-scoring third quarter. Yeah, the most points we've seen in any quarter for either team. Thunder's second most was 16 in the first quarter, and for Elmers it was 15 in the second quarter. They continue to build on their play. This season, Wheaton Athletics is proud to partner with Realty Executives as the exclusive sponsor of replays on our broadcast. We're happy to welcome Eric Logan, Becky Vanderveen, and the energized team to the Wheaton Athletics family and extend a special thank you to them for partnering with us to enhance our WTSN broadcasts. And of course, tonight, Cancer has impacted the lives of nearly everyone, and tonight we have Wheaton basketball and Rikens rallies are fighting back. Tonight's event honors 2017 grad Katie McDaniels, three-time All-American, and her battle against Kronja Sarcoma. All donations tonight support the Sarcoma Foundation of America and will be matched up to $10,000. Please help us reach our goal. See the information on the bottom of the screen to see how you can join the fight against Sarcoma, and that'll show back up once the scoreboard is up. And you can donate to that. We had the chance to interview her. She addressed the crowd at halftime. Thankfully, she is cancer-free at this point um, through treatment, through chemo. But through interviewing her and talking to her personally, definitely a cause that you want to make a donation to. And she just talked about how there's not a lot of awareness for this type of bone cancer, and it's pretty rare. And sometimes there's a lot of delayed diagnosis as it was the case for her. It took the fourth or fifth diagnosis for it to be accurate that it was sarcoma. This one tipped out by Jones close to us. And the Thunder keep it with 12 seconds on the shot clock. This one down to Bird going on Eppard. Gets her own rebound and puts it back up and Eppard 
This will be her third personal foul of the game. It's a little bit of a shove before Jill Berg went up, so it's out of bounds on the baseline. A little bit and more contact. foul called here. And it's against Eppard again. Two fouls in the course of zero seconds because the ball wasn't thrown in again, and she's got four now. So with her fourth personal, she has to take a seat. O'Donnell in, and that is a huge cut to Elmhurst. She was an All-American last year. And this one called against the Thunder. So we're going the other way. Going the other way. That was, there was like a little bit before the ball was entered. It seemed like there was a lot of contact, so. Wyrick over to Logan. O'Donnell. And who's going to be the offensive focus point with Eppert out of the game? Bailey couldn't get this one, and Myra pushing the other way. Wyrick tried to distract it. She did. Berg with the offensive rebound and put back. And as we go the other way, the Thunder gets two more points. So this 13-point lead, the largest for the Thunder. They get Whoa. blocked down by Berg, but a foul call. That was almost a slam down. Foul called on Jen Berg, her first personal. So it wasn't Jill going up for the block that the foul was called on. Even though it wasn't counted because of the foul, that was uh, quite something. We've seen some very impressive blocks tonight. Free throw made there. Here comes Dembski. Picked up her dribble, got it to Jenberg. Down low to Jill, and she is fouled from behind by O'Donnell. Jill Berg has really been putting in work down there. She's accumulated three personal fouls against Elmhurst defenders in the last minute or two. Myroth over to Williams, open for three. Doesn't go, rebounded by Bailey. But when you have a lot of action underneath the rim, like where Jill is always stationed, you will be shoved around quite a bit. Nice jumper from O'Donnell, and it's a 10-point lead for the Thunder. Williams. Dembski quick fire three off the mark, and Jones has it. Dembski after making, after making her first three, misses her next three threes. Jones just inside the three-point arc. Nomars is on a five-point run right now. Down low to Jill Berg, guarded by O'Donnell. Gets around her and she's fouled from behind. So that'll be O'Donnell's second personal foul. Jill Berg should have been in a lot of action for like the past few minutes. And she makes her first free throw. Looks like we have three Thunder players coming in. Free throw line has been a place where she has struggled somewhat this year, shooting 66%. She goes two for two there. She's actually got 12 points on this game. She and Devin Kyler are two Thunder players who are in the double digits right now for points scored. Here's Bailey in the corner to Jones, open for three, hits. Jones cuts it to seven. She's got five points in a row. Thunder looking for an option now. Down low to Myroth. Kick over to Lawson, wide open for three, no good. Devin Kyler boards. 
And Lawson is fouled on the way up. And it will go against number three, Wyrick. Wyrick just reaching over there with her arms. And Lawson off on that one. Elmer has outscored the Thunder in this fourth quarter so far, eight to four. And number 22, Maggie Grady is into the game for the first time, taking out O'Donnell. And Hannah Frazier back in for Jill Berg. And Lawson misses both. Grady to Logan. Logan looking for an outlet. She's trapped here by Dansdale. Wyrick had the ball, but Coach Carrillo wanted to make sure she took that timeout in time so that her team didn't turn the ball over. Yeah, that's probably a good move for them to call timeout. Strong deep defense by the Thunder so far, actually, with those plays. Yeah, with the way the three-point bucket has been falling in the second half for Elmhurst, they get another one here. It's a four-point game, and they're right back in it. Yeah, three points can make a big difference. Like you mentioned earlier, it's it can have a big impact. And with the way they're shooting now, during the last game, three, the last time these two met in December, the three points were the reason they had, took the loss. And also from the free throw out a little bit, mostly free three points. Tonight, Wheaton Basketball is raising awareness and funds for the Sarcoma Foundation of America. Last spring, All-American point guard Katie McDaniels was diagnosed with a rare bone cancer called chondrosarcoma after surgery in May. Thankfully, she is cancer-free today. Help us find a cure by donating to tonight's effort by following the instructions listed on the scoreboard for tonight's broadcast. Thanks to an anonymous donor, all donations raised tonight will be matched up to $10,000. Every little bit helps, so please consider donating. Ball back with the Thunder here and Devin Kyler. This one thrown into the backcourt and Lawson will touch it. And it's a backcourt violation. So a needless turnover for the Thunder. And they've got 12 in this game. Yeah, a little bit of turnovers have been a little bit of an issue to Thunder with their passing. We've seen a few aggressive shots up gone out of bounds, turn and turnovers. Bailey called for the travel here. And the Thunder have it back. Devin Kyler with an earlier rebound now has a double-double in this one, 11 points and 10 rebounds. This one down low to Dan still. Good play to put it in. Sticking with a good old layup. Extend the lead to nine points. Here's Bailey. Down low and a foul called on Maggie Dansdale. I'm not entirely sure that we'll get the replay. Yeah, to me it kind of looked like she was just a victim of circumstance there. A little bit too close to Grady, Maggie Grady there. So ball for Logan to throw in, and five seconds is called. She couldn't get it in in time. So the ball goes back to the Thunder. Lawson getting pressure by Logan, so she throws it to Devin Kyler. Myroth looking for an option, finds Dansdale. Kick out to Myroth, down low to Frazier and a foul from behind going against Grady. And Grady just giving a little bit of a shove there, so Hannah Frazier will go to the line. 
Makes the first one. Four of five today at the free throw line. And Frazier's in the double digits for points scored. And the second one in. 11 point lead for the Thunder now, which is exactly what they came into this quarter with. Logan to Bailey. Now Jones driving in and she's fouled. So it will be a side or a baseline out. Wheaton basketball is on a mission tonight to raise awareness and funds for the Sarcoma Foundation of America in honor of Katie McDaniels and her fight against Conjure Sarcoma. All donations made tonight will be matched up to $10,000, so please consider how you can contribute to tonight's event. Directions are on the scoreboard for how you can donate. Wyrick handed it off to Logan. She's blocked underneath by Kyler. And credit the good defense from Dansdill to allow Kyler to get to this one. It was a good move, but just a nice block. Also in this game, both teams have scored eight points, which explained the 11 point gap. But also in this quarter, there's 10 personal fouls been called, which is the most out of any of the four quarters. This one kicked around by Bailey as well as Myroth and last off Bailey. And that was Elmhurst's fifth turnover this quarter. Now Devin Kyler over to Dansdale. Lawson driving in and a nice scoop layup around the defense. Thunder pushed their lead to 13 again, matching their earlier largest lead and Bailey is the same exact travel she did earlier. Just trying to drive before she puts the ball down. So here's Devin Kyler, down low to Frazier, tipped away by Grady. And Jones is into the game for Jasmine Bailey. Michaela Eppard is down low for the Blue Jays once again. This one up with Dansdale and in. Now a 15 point lead. Wyrick fouled there by Lawson reaching in. Now Lawson was trying to get in there and grab the ball, but just got too much of Elmhurst player. So Wyrick to the line shooting two. Makes the first. Help us reach our goal of raising $10,000 for the Sarcoma Foundation of America. Directions are listed on the bottom of the screen for how you can donate to tonight's event honoring Katie McDaniels and her battle with Condra Sarcoma. An anonymous donor will match up to $10,000, so please consider how you can support this cause. This pass over to Lawson. Wraparound pass gets to Kyler. Hits. Fancy passing from the Thunder for that. Fisher away for the Thunder to move the ball around to get outside for Kyler. She's got 14 points in this game, and that was her second three. Down to Eppard, taken away by Frazier. <laughs> Kelly Lawson. Now the Thunder can work a little bit more possession if they want to, up by 16. <laughs> On an 11-2 run right now. Down to Frazier too far, but tipped out of bounds by Eppard with seven seconds left on the shot clock. So the Thunder will have to work quickly here. Out to Frazier. Four seconds for Kyler. Driving in, and the floater's good. That one about does it now. 
Thunder have an 18 point lead. Kick out to Wyrick, down to Eppard. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Spinning to that left hand like she does so often. She does it well, especially with Frazier right in front of her. To create a little bit more space, that's actually not an easy shot to make. This one down low to Frazier and puts it in. I mean, Frazier does something a little similar, similar with that shot. Leading up by 18. Kayla Jones driving and a wild layup off the mark. This one's stolen away by Grady. Wyrick hits the deck, but she's back up and running down the other way. Eppard tried to put it up and she's blocked. And the rebound by Kyler. It's been a tough night for Eppard. Eight of 18 from the field with 18 points. O of two from deep, two assists and eight boards. And for the Thunder, they have nine blocks in this game, which is about their average per game. It looks like we're gonna see some new Thunder players coming in. After Frazier's shot. And she misses her second free throw of the game. An 89% free throw shooter on the season. Devin Kyler, Maggie Danstill, and Jordan Myroth out of the game now. Jane Ortlip, Kirsten Madsen, and Erica Van Dusen are in. And Frazier 0 for 2 there. And a foul here on Kelly Lawson. Third personal foul. So we're going the other end for McDonald to shoot. For all Donald to shoot, sorry. She, and she, she makes the first. Just a reminder that tonight this is the first part of a double header. Later tonight it will be myself and Caleb Springer on the call for the game against the Elmhurst men and the Wheaton men playing basketball here at King Arena. As in this one, the Thunder will move to 17 and 4 and 10 and 2 in the CCIW. It's their 34th CCIW win at home in a row. And the Blue Jays 12 and 9 and 8 and 4 in the CCIW, which means the Thunder have a two game lead in the CCIW. Madsen puts this one up, doesn't go. Van Dusen fought for it, but Logan came down for, with the board. Wyrick, deep three, hits. Nice three from Wyrick from deep three. This one over by us, saved by Jen Berg. Madsen tried to get it and then ball ends up on the ground and a foul here is gonna go against Madsen. So a hectic course of play there. Madsen had it, then lost it. Looked like O'Donnell fouled her to get it back, but no call and Wyrick to the line. Yeah, basketball is a subjective game, so. And she makes the first one. Wyrick has had a pretty good game. Two of two from three-point land and nine points. Seven boards and six assists. Misses that one. O'Donnell almost had the rebound. Van Dusen able to get it and send it up to Jen Berg, who passes out to Ortlip. And a substitution timeout here as Jacqueline Sanjul enters the game for Jen Berg. Elmer's also working in some subs here. Number 33, Mia Reese is in. And number 11, Elena Cabrera. So 
So valuable time here for those players and for the other players on the benches of each team, a little time to rest as the CCIW season is grueling. And this is about the time where a lot of these players are getting tired playing, you know, every Wednesday and every Saturday. The season can really wear on you. I think actually basketball season might be the longest one of all the D3 sports because they go from middle of October to they can go to late March. Yeah, it's it's a ton. It's a ton of games and it takes a toll on anybody. And so any time that you can give some of your starters some rest is always, always going to be valuable. Help us reach our goal of raising $10,000 for the Sarcoma Foundation of America. Directions are listed on the bottom of the screen for how you can donate to tonight's event honoring Katie McDaniels and her battle with Chondra Sarcoma. An anonymous donor will match up to $10,000. So please consider how you can support this cause. And there's some big thank you to Rikens Rowdies, Rusty Lindsay, and and also of course Katie McDaniel's for for bringing this event to King Arena and to this night. Also, you can continue to donate. Don't worry if if you haven't made it yet, but you can continue to donate now or for the duration of the next game. As chondrosarcoma is just such a rare bone cancer that often gets misdiagnosed as it did for Katie McDaniel. So money is definitely needed as a lot of times it's a cancer that's not caught early on and then tough to get rid of. So money, of course, will go to research and figuring out how to detect it earlier. Ortlip couldn't put that one in and the shot clock ran out. We have 26.6 seconds in the game. So Elmhurst can take the last shot if they want to. Yeah, at this point, probably just going to put one up whenever they have a good look. O'Donnell out to Urso for three, long. And the rebound by San Jewel. Ten seconds left for the Thunder. San Jewel saw it. Pass over to Williams. Two seconds, and she's just going to dribble this one out. And the Wheaton College Thunder win 70 to 58 here in King Arena over the Elmer's Blue Jays. Great win for the Thunder. We had four Wheaton players in double digits. Devin Kyler had 16 points, followed by Hannah Frazier and Joe Burke had 12. And then Eppert had 18 points, followed by Wyrick and Bailey and Jones each at six. Yeah, good game all around and really good job by the Thunder to get the win here tonight. Only nine blocks for them in this game. Of course, that's 10 fewer than they had the last time, but still always a really nice effort from them to be able to do that. And of course, just a great cause supported here tonight for Katie McDaniels and for anyone fighting cancer. Um, and you can see Still that ticker on the bottom, donate on Venmo for tonight's Sarcoma event at Riken's Rowdies uh, is where you can figure out how to uh, donate money to this cause, a very worthy cause and a type of cancer that's very rare. So please look into that. We're going to take a break and the men's game will be up in about 25 minutes. I'll be here play by play with Caleb Springer for the CCIW men's basketball matchup against Elmhurst. This has been a Wheaton Thunder Sports Network broadcast produced by Sunrise Communications. I'm Andrew Pitkin alongside Hannah Jap. So long.